Welcome back. This is Victoria with Plantastics and I figured I would just do a very brief office tour. Um, I've just got a few things changed. So I bought this Phalaenopsis. I haven't purchased an orchid, a blooming one, um, in a really long time. I really like how each flower is just completely different. And I've never seen one that is so colorful right here. These always look like birds to me. You can even see their beak. And like these are their feet and they're trying to catch something. So I'm pretty much glued to my desk. So that's nice to be able to see. And then we're gonna skip on over to this corner. This is the terrarium I built for my begonias and they are really taking off. There is one new leaf forming on this really cute one. The Brevimosa is really taking off. And there are a few fungus gnats, so I have that in there. I recently repotted these begonias and I put them together. They're in a 10 inch pot now instead of individual four inch pots. I want them to branch out and grow up. The newer leaves are huge. Let's see. If I can get a measuring. Doing things with one hand is like a new skill. I'm not really great at it, so. They're like six inches. I've got new leaves forming on my alocasias. The silver dragon's got a new leaf. My red secret. Looks like a beetle. It did get sunburnt. I've moved this one around a good bit. Sometimes where I put it, it's just kind of an experiment like this when this leaf formed it had a lot more light than whenever I had it when this leaf formed this leaf that's forming now should be pretty large this light's pretty strong here's the Radigan's Luxurians Anthurium very beautiful quilted leaves and here is this Super cute inflorescence. This is more than likely a sterile cross. I read it in a book um, on also several different posts online. So I'm just blooming or allowing it to bloom instead of cutting the bloom off just because I think it's kind of pretty. This is my Mykins and it's covering the pole at its own pace. I keep taking cuttings from this one spot and it's like very active. Here are some of my slow growers, my Anthurium clarinervium and then my Billianti. So they kind of have indirect light. It's not fully on them. And then there's my giant air plant there. But yeah, I really look forward to these growing in. And then this is another really great place. So when I'm sitting at my desk, I'm mostly looking in this corner. Um, I do kind of look over here as well, um, but I mostly look at this corner. So these begonias are so pretty and I do enjoy looking at them. It's like a bouquet, but you look at it every day and it doesn't really, you know, bouquets don't last more than a week and these are gonna be here for a while. So here are my Nepenthes. I have three different ones. So this one on the left is a hybrid of some kind, the largest one, and it has a little tiny baby growing. When I went on vacation this past summer, I came back and it had several babies at the base and I removed them, I believe a little bit too early I think I'm just going to leave this one for now because I want it to create some pictures before it's removed. But yeah, these are very 
interesting and really rewarding plants. Whenever you get them, they're more than likely going to lose some of their pictures. So whenever the humidity drops, I don't really know what these are called. I'm going to call them hats, but the little hats fall off. They dry up and fall off. And that's pretty much how I know my humidity's dropped. Um, or that's how I would know before I had a humidifier. Um, checker, I don't know what that thing's called. But, yes, so this is Bill Bailey. It has these really dark pictures. And you can see the pictures were really small when I first got it. And now they're really large. Um, so that's some more. They're interesting in that they're all so different. The shape of them are, like this one, like almost looks like it just gets really skinny and then flares out. And this one almost is pretty straight all the way down. And then these are very thick and very large. Um, I looked online and I never saw any as big as these. So I got really lucky. They really like being here. And they do have some sun stressing. They don't have sunburns. And the pictures are really big. I'm not going to decrease. Here's another, a third really large, large picture. So I'm not going to decrease the light. Here are some of my propagations. Here's that larger begonia that I have. I just cut off the top. And I did that because I wanted to encourage new growth in this enclosure. The newer leaves will look prettier. Like, will you, will you just look at those? They are so pretty that are forming at the base. And there are tons of aerial roots forming. I think you can see them at the base. Really um, having a bit of a learning curve with this technology. But there are aerial roots and then also roots forming at the base here and then you've got a few roots forming and that's just because the humidity is really high in there so anyways this is a beautiful anthurium not sure which dot block hybrid it is they keep calling they as in people on the internet and sellers keep calling this one specific darker leafed anthurium and I don't know which variety that it is they they refer to that as the dog block but as you know or if you're unfamiliar he has multiples like he has Zara he has Michelle but I believe that that one is the the one with the really dark leaves and it's really cool because if you look at it it looks like a bug of some sort and it has little antennas and then the veining in the very middle is silver and it's also got some red but it's fading to green now these are two of my terrariums I've got several different plants in each one and I go into more detail about that in a separate video so here are my violets violets kind of cycle They'll bloom for me for a month or two, and then four to six months later, you know, I'll give them, after they do a full-blown, like, bloom, like, super spectacular, I repot them, and then four to six months later, after, you know, adequate light and fertilizer, they'll bloom for me again. And the first time that they bloom, I've normally just gotten them, or they're currently in bloom at a store. So the second time that they bloom, they've had a repot with me and they've had, you know, fertilizer in my care and they really, really put on a show. Like this one is going to be spectacular um, because there are so many, I say that because there are so many blooms that haven't even come up yet. You can see them kind of at the base forming. So this one's going to be a very prolific bloom this one i mean it's pretty cool looking but it's just not blooming despite them being in the same conditions this one's not going to bloom to the extent that this one is and it's partly because these look like it looks like it has more flowers because these are doubles and these are singles 
So that's just um, the flower pattern uh, with the petals. So you can see the petals. Yeah, there's a lot more petals on these, so they look a lot larger. Here is my Hoya. These are two different plants from two different greenhouses. That's why they're so different. The one on the right is like an elbow, and the one on the left has a lot less variegation. That being said, the one on the left with less variegation has grown substantially faster than the one on the right, just because it has more energy to uh, draw from those leaves. But yeah, I do love Hoyas. I just got into them. I had one early junior college, high school, and it was a Carnosa. Here is my other no ID. The first two I showed you, the white and the burgundy, they're also no ID. And that just means that it didn't come with a label. You can't identify violets based off of their appearance like you can other plants. Something you got to have is a crazy root system to have crazy growth like this. Whenever you see lots of roots forming, it means you're fixing to have a lot of activity up top. This is a plant that has beautiful double blooms. It's, it's nearing the end of its blooming cycle. The leaves are damaged from being bumped around. It just looks kind of sad. The leaves on my other violets look really nice, but this one looks kind of depressing. And then here is Ma's Top Base. This is the first time it's ever bloomed for me. And it has some really interesting variegation on the borders. And it has double um, single blooms. It has singles. They're not doubles. So here are some of my other plants. This is my Philodendron Splendid. This is a string of hearts. I also have a variegated string of hearts, but it's in a much smaller container. This is another seedling. And, uh, yeah. That's a Darth Faderina hybrid. So these are all of my garden shelving plants and what I like to do is I'll have my African violets in like another room and when they start to bloom I'll move them into here so I can enjoy them because I spend so much time in here which is why you'll see a lot of different violets blooming in here but you don't necessarily see them in here all the time so if we go over to this corner, we see a very sleepy dog and we see a melanocrysum that is making a comeback. I finally have humidity or have it, <laughs> hey Velveeta, um, acclimated to where the leaves look normal which is great because I had humidity issues and I also had fans pointing at this plant and when they were rolled up, they tore from the wind. And I water it with a bottle at the top and then all the water flows down the moss pole into the soil. And I do that so I don't move this. Like I put it here so it won't be disturbed, it won't be moved. This is a very large, Stromanthe Trio Star. It's three different beautiful colors. It's got some white, it's got some light green, and it also has this tan color. This is a Platinum Peace Lily. I love Peace Lilies, and when I saw this one, 
I really wanted it because the leaves just looked so unique. I'd never seen anything like it. And I placed it here because there's this spot where there's just not any plant. So it's like just filled it in and it looks really nice. Here is my peace lily and it has several different blooms. It has six, but five are open right now. Here is bloom number six. And these are really pretty. Seems like every time the semester's ending, they bloom. So it's nice because I get to enjoy some flowers without having to go out and get any. This is my Diphen Bacchia and it is also blooming. You can kind of see some of the blooms there. I love this so much. I purchased this actually because I wanted a bird of paradise and they don't look similar other than having really large leaves. The patterns on this a bird of paradise just doesn't have, but I liked it because it was really large and this is also a really large plant. So I've had this one for several years. It was pretty big. I can't find nursery pots for it or couldn't at the time. So I cut a Lowe's bucket and that's its pot for now and drilled several holes in it. So this is where my dog sleeps. Her blanket's in the dryer so she's got my plaid shirt. And she is a ham. She likes to tell me when there's deliveries and that's very important. She's not a curious pet. She's not um, into plants. She doesn't dig in them or anything. She's really perfect. She has perfect behavior. But if you did have plants, a lot of these plants, you need to really look into them because many of the ones I have are poisonous. This is my Raven ZZ. And it's so pretty. I really like plants with dark leaves. Here is my philodendron brassel. You can't see it, but there is a trellis here somewhere. And it's really taken over. Like it's a very nice plant. It does have a little bit of sun burning, but it's because it gets full sun here and it seems to enjoy it. You can do that with a philodendron. This is a very confused Venus flytrap and a sundew that's blooming. This is the first time I've ever seen the blooms open. It's put up flower stalks quite a few times, but they didn't open. Like it was really weird, so I just cut them off. But here we have these really interesting combinations. You've got all these new growth and then you've got all this dead and that's just part of it. It's wanting to go into dormancy but not fully committing. And I put it in this window because I figured, you know, the colder temperature would cause it to go into dormancy but it, it doesn't seem to have done that entirely. This is my Saracenia. It's really cool. If you look at the backs of the leaves, they have these really nice patterns. And I think they only really get that if they are in full sun. Like this one is, even though it's inside, it gets full sun. And the leaves start off like these straws. They're little straws and then they open up. And some of them are green and some of them are red. They're in the same soil. And the roots on these are kind of like intense. They're like growing out of the sides and stuff. I think I might put these outside next year, next summer. Probably all of these, just to see how large they get. I think wasps really like these. I don't really have a wasp problem, but it might be cool. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed my video, be sure to like it. If you want to see more videos like this, 
be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.